I'm going to do a uh, demonstration for my friend Mark Doughty on uh, waxing clister for this weekend's uh, White Mountain Classic. Jackson has seen a bunch of rain, just like a lot of eastern New England, and uh, so the snow's really granular, refrozen, and uh, definite clister conditions, and probably pretty abrasive is what we're planning on. Um, so a clister binder is going to be really, really important. Um, Mark is from the Boston area. He's the CEO of Thought Forms, which is Noah Hoffman's headgear sponsor. And uh, he's a big supporter, an ex-bike racer at a really high level and a very fit guy. But he's going to want kick the whole time, so we want to really make sure that he doesn't lose his wax during the race. Uh, for abrasive conditions, there's no better base binder than Rodi Chola. Uh, this stuff is super, super hard. It's got some tar in it for whatever that's worth, but it bonds to the base better than any other clister that I'm aware of. However, it makes a really, really hard finish, almost like obsidian glass, and kicking clisters have a very hard time sticking to it really well. And so it's really important to have some sort of transla translation layer, some, uh, some transition there. For that, a lot of people use like a Rody Special Violet. I've really come to like this Vow TK based clister. It doesn't have any kicking ingredient in it, so it uh, tends to be very fast, but it's got real elasticity and it holds the kicking clister in place better than anything I've used. And so the combination of Chola to bond the clister job to the base very well, and K base to hold the kicking clister in place is really good. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate that application and then we'll put on a K Violet uh, kicking clister because. That's my best guess at what will be a good job for the weekend. Uh, again, maybe the best thing would be to test on the day of the race and have your base clister all set to go, but we'll go ahead and do the full, the full wax job here. As always, we're going to start by lightly abrading the kick zone, uh, just a little 150 grit sandpaper. You want to have the kick zone well marked. This is one of Chris Freeman's clister skis. It's got a pretty compact pocket, quite a stiff ski, um, and so we're just, we're just going to practice on Chris's skis here. Uh, to abrade, I just go in the direction of the ski. That ski is well cleaned and, uh, and in good shape, so it doesn't take terribly much. You just want a nice dull texture on it. I'm gonna open up the Chola. New packages today, you know, a marketing video. We don't heat the shop here, and it's probably only about 40 or 45 degrees in here, so the clister should harden up pretty quick. It does make it a little hard to work with, maybe a closer to putting it on outside than in a nice heated room. We don't need a real heavy layer of chola. Once I get the stuff moving, I often just draw a line right down the middle of the zone. Just like this. If you're working in a place where you have power, iron and clister makes life much, much easier. Um, any, any old iron will do. I usually run it pretty hot so that we work pretty quickly. Um, we're going to try to iron this chola right into the base. It's almost going to sort of disappear into the base. It doesn't need to be a heavy layer. We're really just focusing on getting it well bonded. When we're ironing clisters, we don't have the same concerns about protecting the integrity of the base material that we do when we're working on the glide zones and paraffins. So going back and forth on the ski a little bit is okay. You do want to be careful of any sort of thermal sensitivity that is, um, you know, there in the ski. We don't want to overheat the core of the ski. So work with purpose and fairly quickly. Once you've ironed the clister, if you want to just make sure that you haven't got too much falling off the edges, that's a good idea. You can clean out the groove a little bit. Again, with the Chola, we're not using so much that it's a big problem, and we're really just using this to adhere the wax to the base. While the Chola is still warm, I'm going to go ahead and start working with this K-Base clister. It's really important to bond your base clister, that's this, to your binder clister, your Chola. Once again, that Chola is going to set up super, super hard. Once it freezes, it'll be just almost glassy, really hard to get anything to bond to it. And it's important to get your, your transition layer 
well bonded to the chola in order to have optimal durability. It's really, I've seen plenty of people put a dutiful layer of chola on and then cover it when it's already too cool and the wax will just strip right off of the chola. So this is kind of one operation, the chola and the base clister. For the base clister, once again, we don't need a ton. This base clister makes a nice cushion layer. Uh, my chola is a little too warm and the base clister is a little too cold, but we're going to get this done anyway. On a really uh, strong ski, a tall clister ski, a stiff one, we might want more base clister. This has good body, good bulk properties, and it won't break down and move. And so if you have a, a ski that requires a real strong cushion of wax, it's a good idea to build some volume with a really elastic and tough wax like this, as opposed to a softer kicking wax, which is gonna migrate and smear and you'll lose kick and slow the skis down. It's hard to give really good advice about the thickness of layers because it's so dependent on the skis. In cold and abrasive conditions, generally speaking, you can go a little heavy on your clister layers and ski the ski in. It's kind of common that when you get on the snow, the ski's a little pitchy at first and you might feel the clister grab. Give it about a half a kilometer or so and it should start to speed up and feel pretty good. Once again, we're gonna hit this with an iron. The base is already warm, so this should iron in pretty quickly. All we're really doing is spreading our K-base clister on top of the chola. Don't need to really mix them or anything, it's just layering. And we don't really need to heat that into the base because the chola is already well heated in. Once again, we can smooth a little with the thumb. And at this point, we've got our base clister pretty well established. And we're going to let this cool off before we put on our kicking clister be fine at this point to let this cool overnight and to have this well frozen. You can texture it a little bit with a cork in the morning and put on your kicking clister at the race, even with a heat gun or a torch and a cork, no problem. Uh, but we will continue the demonstration and put some kicking clister on in the shop once it's cool. Once our base clister application has cooled, uh, we can take a cork and just lightly smooth it. It really shouldn't be a big issue because it should be fairly smooth from application. We just don't want a big chunky mess on here. So when you're corking a clister, it's best to work it when it's a little cold. You don't want to overwork it because you'll heat it up and it'll start to grab the cork. Um, and you want to work with relatively light pressure, but not a big deal. And for the kicking clister, uh, this K-Violet is based on a mix of the old uh, Vauti Universal and Violet that has been used on the World Cup. Uh, Vauti made it as a pre-mix for a long, long time. This is a really versatile kicking clister for all coarse snow around and below freezing. Actually works alarmingly well above freezing as well. Um, but it, it tends to be very fast and in, in those uh, frozen granular conditions, icy snow, it's a, a really good bet for a good kicking clister. So we're going to go ahead and apply a pretty standard layer, bearing in mind that the K-base clister will keep it from spreading down the ski too much, and bearing in mind that in icy granular hard tracks, uh, you got an opportunity to ski the clister in for speed. It will start out a little pitchy, but it will speed up as you ski it for a little bit. If you're at the race site and you don't have an iron, all you've got is a torch or maybe you have a heat gun, uh, at this point you would warm this up and then spread it either by hand or with a cork. Um, since I'm in a shop and because I really like ironing clisters, I'm going to go ahead and iron this. Uh, when we're ironing clisters to a base clister, we want to warm that clister up enough to bond through, but that's not critical the way it is with the chola bonding to the base. This K-Base does a great job of hanging on to kicking clister, and you don't need a lot of heat to bond the kicking clister to it. If we were trying to bond 
a kicking clister straight to chola, it would be critical to warm the chola up enough to get a good bond. But this K-Base will bond cold. It's not a problem, even if we were just to spread it by cork. Um, cold, there would be no issue losing the wax here. But uh, the iron makes it fast and easy. That's warmed up. We'll pull the clister away from the edges. Plow it up out of the groove, and spread either side of this of the groove of the uh, kicks on there. Sorry. And then generally on these cold clisters, I like to just let this uh, cool a bit and hit it once more with the cork just to smooth it out. Uh, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that, though. Here we are, done.